Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AJ CADS webinar, Cut Opening Automated Dimensioning in Revit. My name is Alexandra Sheja. I'm an MAP engineer working here in AJ CAD. And as a company, we create applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of the world's leading BIM practitioners. And as a company, we eliminate tasks that do not create value to the users. And through the years, we have developed the widest range of TrueBIM software in the world of Revit professionals, covering wood framing, metal framing solutions, precast concrete design, as well as reinforcement tools, and the tools for MAP part. Cut opening, MAP hangers, fire sprinklers, and the most universal of our tools, Smart Browser, which allows to manage your element libraries and create centralized library for all the company. Today, we'll be talking specifically about the cut opening and it got new feature that will be the smart dimensions. And in today's webinar, we will cover the insertion of openings very briefly, the new interface of the smart dimension, possible rules for dimensioning, as well as some nice features, joining dimensioning lines, uh, naming those and moving them around the project. And at the end of the webinar, we will end up with an architectural project with openings uh, for all the MEP elements, as well as separate section views where openings and some linked MEP elements will be measured respectively to the architectural model. And the live demo, this is the project that some of you already will know. Uh, I usually show the possibilities of the cut opening on this building. And today, as a start, I will speak about how to install the cut opening tool. If you would want to trial it, we have 14 day free trials. It's possible by installing our tools for BIM doc. It can be downloaded from the AJ CAD website. It'll be installed in your toolbars. It's needed to click on show doc. This is the floatable window. You can close it at any time. And then there will be all tools. Here's the list of all the tools produced by our company. And if you want to trial one of these tools or activate it, you can click on it like this, for example, for the cut opening. For the users who've never tried it, there'll be a additional button, get a trial key, also separate line here where you can uh, enter that activation key and use the tool. Once it is activated, I will show on the MEP hangers tool. It will look very similar. Here will be cut opening. It also comes uh, with a sort mark in the bundle. So you can test both, so both of those tools. If you want to watch some of the tutorials, you can click on watch tutorial button or read documentation if you would want to learn more about the tool. After the tool is installed, there is a specific button uh, to add it to the toolbar, as well as you can use it from this Tools for BIM doc. All the comments will be available, but I usually add it to the toolbar and that's what it will do with the cut opening. And for the cut opening, it will be added to the Tools for Revit Create Modify tab. And this is how the tool will look starting from today. Previously, it was only this part on the left and now Smart Dimensioning was added. To begin with, in this building, I have architectural model with MAP model linked, all the pipes, ducts, and some cable trays. And for this building, we will insert all the openings to be measured. Openings are inserted through this tool. It's possible to create additional rules for the uh, openings, uh, how for each system separately openings should be created, which uh, what kind of offsets should be created, uh, even if it's, it's possible to set the specific opening size depending on the size of MEP elements. And today I have already prepared all the files for the opening insertion. All the rules are created, so I will go straight into the insertion. This is the table for the openings. Here are all intersections described for which openings can be created. As well as that, with our tool, it's possible to create real void openings in architectural or structural models, as well as uh, solid elements, sort of placeholder for the openings if you're working in MAP model and you cannot uh, cut 
architectural geometry. So let's insert all the free openings. We have 960 intersections. That should be 480 openings. We'll insert voids in all the floors. That's 480 openings. And yes, we have openings. Some of those are joined. I will close the window. And we have all the openings. At first go rectangular openings, and then at the bottom should be all the round openings. So here's diameter, their size, cut offset, which was used to create the opening, systems to which it belongs to, and if it belongs to more than one system, those are displayed with a comma, one after another and some opening marks. So DPH means that through this opening, the duct is going and pipe hydronic. So that was that insertion. And now let's go into the dimensioning. So what it can do, it can be activated by clicking on smart dimensions. Additional menu will pop up. As with many of our tools, there's a configuration. So it's, there's a possibility to set which elements you want to be measured. And here on the left right now, you can see all the possible categories. I have already saved some rules on my computer. So there are pipes, ducts, uh, grids, levels, walls, different uh, structural level elements, uh, elements that are point-based or phase-based, parts, openings, windows, doors, columns, different MAP elements, floors, and even structural rebar and structural foundations. So for all these elements, uh, the measurements can be joined or made to be created separately, but with just one click. And let's try that. For that, I will at first go to the north view to see the facade of the building. And here I would want to show a measurement of the uh, windows according to the uh, grids present in this building. So all what's needed to be done uh, when after rules are created is dimension elements in view, choosing which configuration should be applied. So here I have windows with grids, clicking dimension, and it will put all the dimensions. Also when creating dimensions, it's possible to write down into the dimensions some information of the elements that are dimensioned. So here we have grids, and windows and even the type of the window which was used. If we would have different window types, it would be possible to divide this dimension line into separate ones and each would represent specific type of the window. And let's do some modifications for it to measure the vertical as well. Right now it's measuring grids, windows according to the grids. So to do any modifications, there is a modify dimensions button you can choose the already placed dimension. And as you can see here, I have chosen to measure windows, grids. They're the first ones standing in line, just so it would be easier to know what I'm working with. And then choosing what should be measured, elements in view. Right now I was measuring just elements according to horizontal dimensions. Also let's add measurement according to the vertical. And let's measure top and bottom edges of the window, although it would be possible to measure just location lines, center reference plane, or top bottom reference planes. Let's click Save. And it will add just measurement of the windows. Since there are no grids, only levels, and I haven't added those to my uh, settings, all the windows measured for this building. The same would be for the levels if we would want to add those, uh, but I will show that already with the openings. Uh, for the openings, I have created a section of the shaft view. It, it is this location. Let's go to the shaft view. Here are some of the openings and let's add one more additional opening. We have right now here all the rectangular openings and let's make one of those as a round not containing any MEP 
elements. We will measure here right now in the horizontal position, according uh, distances from the openings, from their sides to the wall and the grid, and then add some vertical dimensions and maybe do some changes how the openings themselves are measured. So the first one would be opening from the walls side view. Adding that one, dimension is measuring grids and size of the wall. And then the second one is measuring the opening size of the openings according to the wall and the grids. So it would be possible to join these lines as well. And like I mentioned, it would be possible to separate the lines. So let's do some separation of the lines. And since we have two different types of openings, one of them is round, another one is rectangular, we can create separate dimensioning rules for those. And I will even show those. So to redimension them, we could go into modify dimensions, or since the rules are already created, I would delete all the dimensions in view, click on dimension, and I have types filtered. So what I've done here, openings are point and phase based details, as well as I've included uh, grids and levels into the measurement and the walls just to measure later vertically from the top and bottom. So for the point face based details, we are measuring right now the front face of the wall. So that's what we have here. And we have measurement position, then type of the measurement. Do we want to measure reference planes or central line, just location point? We were doing the sides, so left, right reference planes. And then we can click on join dimension lines. That's what we've seen here. They were all joined into one. Later, we'll try to enjoin them as well. But you will notice that we have multiple dim dimensioning rules. So I have created another one where I've did some filtering and filtered elements as round. Uh, this opening has in the type named the round word. And for this one, I have created the same uh, dimensioning rules, except that I have used center line for dimensioning. And how that would look like, it just creates two separate lines, one for round openings and one for rectangular openings. And the last one, as I mentioned, it just measured the distances between the grids. And then to add any other dimensions, we do not need necessarily to delete the previously inserted one. We can add something on top. So if we do openings from floors, side view, so to know the location from the floor, to the bottom of the opening. I can click dimension and it adds those dimensions. In this case, you will notice that they're not interconnected between each other because for most of the openings, it's only needed to know the height for only that opening. Because if we would join all these lines, they would form continuous dimension and we would actually know distance to the floor only of the last opening. So here we have different distances for different elements. And by this one, we can go further. If it's needed, move them. And I think I have another view, uh, just a few more openings and starting from fresh. I think it's uh, dimensions were placed here as well, but it is possible to change that uh, through the modification. There are specific settings. In the configuration settings, it's possible to set up how much this dimension should be offset from the element. So right now it's set as a three. If I set it as a one, okay, click save and modify it, you can see that it just became closer to all the elements. Of course, it's possible to drag them by hand, but it's way easier to just write down how far you would want to stretch those. Also for the openings, just like with all the regular dimensions, you can change how the dimension is seen. So is it continuous, baseline, or ordinate? And it's the similar feature that I've shown here for the height. If I would change dimension type, I would also have separate lines for measuring. All what I've shown right now was in the current project, but I have to 
mentioned that it's working with linked elements as well. So I will just delete the dimensions in view and add one more dimension. That would be MEP with grids and levels. So the MEP elements are in the, inside the linked project. And how it would work, if I click on edit for these rules, in the main configuration, there is additional setting measure elements from linked models. So that's how our tool knows to analyze linked projects as well. And if it finds something with what matches the rules, it measures that. So let's put, oh yeah, here I have just created the elevation from the bottom of MEP element to the floor of the current room or current space. So it would be possible to also measure solid openings in MEP model according to the floors, walls, grids, and levels in architectural model if that architectural model is linked. So it works in all the directions right now. So the some of the configurations which I've used in this webinar will be installed together with the new update. So you will have the basis from which to start using the tool. We have free trials that I've mentioned also in the beginning for 14 days. So feel free to go to our webpage, download tools for BIM Doc, and activate any of the tools that you would want to try. And thank you for your attention today. Uh, see you during the next webinars. AGA CAD, building BIM together.